Yes. Uh, thanks for in agreeing to be interviewed by me. Um, obviously, your background is that you uh, were a player and played most notably for a while at um, you know Notts Forest under Brian Clough, uh, which would have been very interesting. Um, and a lot of your career has been around coaching, and you've coached at uh, Bristol Rovers and City, Arsenal, QPR, Sheffield Wednesday, Chelsea. So, you know, uh, some major, major clubs there. So you've obviously got a lot of experience and your current role is as the Fulham Deaf and Great Britain um, Deaf coach with some notable achievements recently, which we'll get on to. Um, and I'd also like to talk a little bit uh, later about your role as an FA tutor. But firstly, thinking about coaching, um, you know, as an experienced coach working within professional football, what are some of the things that are really important to you as a coach? Um, there are mainly how we interact with players and, and how that interaction works. Unless players buy into what we do, and unless they are motivated and, and have good self-esteem and stuff, we won't get what we want out of them. So for their development, for their ways, we need to be able to interact better with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a lot of it is about the communication as well as the, the tech, technical technical. What have been some of the, the highlights for you in your you know your coaching career? Um, I mean more recently the two cups which we'll, we'll talk about um, but you know working at the international level and taking them to European Championships and reaching the semi-final of the Euros, beating the Germans, the Dutch, the Spanish and stuff along the way was uh, were, were pretty special with the deaf squads. Mm -hmm. um, seeing some of those youngsters at Arsenal, like Jack Wilshire and Cesc Fabregas and stuff like that come through the ranks has been, uh, been special well, too. Obviously yeah, a lot of coaches out there uh, watching this will be curious about if there are any ways that you work differently, um, you know, with an ability squad like, you know, a deaf squad. Um, what would be the, the major differences, if any, for you? Um, the deaf, obviously they have you know, a, a difference of communication in terms of the, the normal communication channels that we use. Um, so we need to understand really what people's first, second, third thought are on the pitch to be able to, to ensure that it doesn't need to be a verbal communication, that they can read what each other are doing. So a lot of my work with the deaf involves setting patterns that we will follow and understanding each other's way of playing. Um, and then getting, getting closer to what their needs are for us to be able to identify where they want to go. Why do people turn up to training, whether that's a five-year-old kid or a, or a senior international? Unless we understand why they're there, we can't really develop for them. So we need to understand the reasons they've turned up. If they've turned up just for a kick about and a bit of fun, is that what they're actually walking away with? If they've come for a development because they want to get into an academy or they want to get to a national squad or whatever it be, that we can give them the support and help that they need to reach their target. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I mean it sounds very interesting because it's, <coughs> it, it takes on board a whole different um, way of thinking and approaching and I suppose your, your awareness, your personal awareness as a coach must be pretty high. Yeah, yeah. Um, the years and years of experience that we've had means that you can see things early enough to be able to identify what the issues are and, and to start to address them early enough so that they become uh, smooth and, and, and they get back onto track rather than, than leaving it for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <coughs> There's a new set of courses, the FA Youth Awards, which are Trevor Brookings' baby in terms of the future of the game and where the game is going. And We played a part in piloting them and, and running those courses. There's a about 40 of us nationally that run those courses. Um, those go into a lot bigger detail in terms of creating the right environment, what is it actually a good environment for a five-year-old compared to a 12-year-old? Mm -hmm. How does it differ when you're going into a school playground compared to an academy system and so on and so on? So those different environments that we work in and understanding what the children's needs are in each of those environments. Okay, and so do you do a lot of work with, um, you know, with the youth side of the game? Yeah, um, that was my background for quite a few years to work with the youth and, and that whole youth development structure in academy systems. Um, I now do a lot of work with the coaches that work in those environments, so a lot of that would be grassroots coaches that are working with their local clubs through to academy coaches and director of youth and so on. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your skills sort of go across the board. from previous conversations yeah. that we've had that a, a major part of that had been about some of the recent training that you did uh, with Inside Performance for your NLP sport practitioner. So before we go on to that, um, what were the things that you know you used um, with your players and with yourself to get that great result from the programme? Okay. Um, as we were uh, actually in the change rooms, we've done the warm up, we've done all the tactical things, we've done all of those bits. It's now a matter of how motivated and confident are they in that result. Um, and looking around the changing room, you could see that there was a few players suffering a little bit from lack of confidence through. It was the biggest game in their career so far, um, and up against a formidable opposition. <coughs> um, and we, we got them together, got them to picture a time in their past when they had felt very confident, very proud, uh, very focused. And we took those feelings and emotions from that time in their past when they had been at their most confident or most uh, focused and things like that, put those feelings into them now and then they walked out into the pitch and you could see a, a real distinct difference. They were six inches taller than they were before they walked out. You could see the, the Arsenal players looking and, and seeing a difference in, in our players and the way they were approaching the game. And you could see just in the lineup as they were walking along and shaking hands that confidence in the players were there. Um, during the game itself where there would be times when Arsenal put us under a lot of pressure, um, those are the times when when players start to self-doubt and start to worry whether what we're actually doing is right, is it working, what do I need to change. Um, but you could see they didn't have that in that game, they were completely focused, they had belief in what they were doing, they believed what they were doing was right. Um, didn't didn't need to do anything tactically other than reinforce what we had done on the training ground. Um, and they they continued that throughout the whole 90 minutes, which mm -hmm. was a fantastic for them. First time I've seen them reach that level of, of confidence and, and focus. So mm -hmm. yeah, what were your main reasons really for choosing, uh, you know, to, to do the NLP sport practitioner? Um, <coughs> based on the fact that you know you are a very highly accomplished coach anyway and you know so what was your main or well, what were your main reasons for um, that? I looked at myself personally and looked at the things that I needed to have a better background knowledge of and a better understanding of um, and I at times lacked confidence myself either as a player or as a coach and I put myself in environments where it wasn't particularly comfortable so there was reasons for me personally to, to go on the course and learn more and to have a better understanding of my own self. Um, and then in terms of being able to help the players, there's a, we are really experienced in the technical and the physical aspects and the pre-season and the technical and tactical side of the game. Um, but it really, uh, I could really identify that there was a need in me to understand more on the psychological and social side. Um, and that whole communication levels and everything else, not just with deaf players, but um, just coaching in general. And the amount of coaches that I see on coach education courses that, that have an idea of what they want, but not necessarily have the expertise to be able to go out and, and do it. And you'll meet coaches that are used to working with five-year-olds um, and want an understanding of how to, to work with that age bracket or a person working with a 12 year old that has a particular skill set or they've come in with from various different backgrounds and so on and so on so that the psychological side is massive in football and um, underestimated in a lot of times within the industry um, and I just needed to have that edge where I knew a little bit more it's an area that I've been looking at for a long time um, researched who would be the best people for us, who would be the ones that would give us the, the best course um, and picked inside performance having researched various different other avenues and looked and picked what would be the best for us. Great, great. And um, so obviously you know you've, you've already had successes from using it. What do you think then have been some of the key points that you have 
taken from the program and incorporated into your existing experience? Um, we talk a lot in coach education about um, whether people are visual learners, kinesthetic audible learners and so on and so on. Um, but in the football industry and in coach education, we just touch the surface. We don't really get underneath and go into what it really means. Um, and those things were absolutely fascinated to go into that in a better detail and to, and to get that whole language thing right um, and could see so much benefit from it. Um, and it's already paid dividends both on the pitch, off the pitch, and players with certain pieces that, that maybe I wouldn't have been as uh, in tune with their things as, as I now am. Um, so the language and those sorts of things have been phenomenally big changes for me. Um, just the way that we look at things, the way that it's now put into a positive perspective rather than, than what, the way we used to think before. Um, and those types of things have been, been a huge difference for me. Mm, good, good. You know, thinking maybe away a little bit from, uh, you know, from the coaching environment or the football environment. Um, how has the course helped you, you know, um, in, in other areas, maybe, you know, in, in the more business approaches to your to your work, um, you know, and also personal areas as well. I mean, how you know how have you kind of noticed it working there? Um, I've, to be honest, noticed a difference in the way that I talk to the children and you know that sort of stuff. My own kids and and seeing where they would would uh, benefit from being more positive in the way that they looked at things. And things like that. So it's helped me at home. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, there would have been jobs before that I wouldn't have felt confident to go into that environment or even to apply for a job before. Um, I now know that I'm capable of doing those things but would always have backed off before. Now I'm confident to go and go, yeah, I can do that. I can, I can, I can do this type of situation. So it's opened so many doors for me. Mm -hmm. There are areas of work that I would have been reluctant to take on before. Um, and just from the day when I booked on the course and the pre-course material and everything else already started to affect the way I looked at life and the way I looked at those types of environments that I wouldn't have been comfortable in before. Um, and I've already earned far more than what the course cost um, just from taking on work that I wouldn't have taken on before. Right. Um, so in the short period that we've had from getting the pre-course task to the completion of the course, I've already earned far more than what the course cost. Oh, okay, well that's that's very interesting to know. Yeah, I didn't realise that. Yes, absolutely. So really, it's paid for itself, and and more. and more. Yeah, yeah, great. So I guess probably then from a career development point of view, um, investing time and money was worth it. Definitely, it's uh, as I say, it's already paid in terms of financially. Already mm -hmm. paid. Um, there are. Uh, jobs. This is the time of season, at the end of the season, where jobs become available and things like that. And before those offers would have come in, and those things would have come in, and I would have just dismissed them. Now I'm taking them a lot more serious, and and uh, I'm sure over the next few years that my career will take a, a big step forward. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So you it's mentioned nice. along with the course that what we do is we give people pre-learning material prior to coming so that you know you can hit the ground running when you get there. Um, how did you find that and um, you know, what are your thoughts on using that material? When I first opened the pack and saw that it was an awful lot more information than we get on some of the coach education courses, let alone the pre-course stuff, um, but once you, you have a look and you get the CDs and play them while you're in the car, um, I could feel a change over the, the weeks of listening to them in the car and, and certain things that had been unclear before were starting to make sense. Um, and it's surprising how much of that information you absorb just from listening to it while you're driving, that you turn up on the course and things seem familiar to you. Uh, you've never heard of them before apart from listening to it on the CD. But suddenly they make sense and, and so the course, when you actually start, all of those things are already in place and you can already hit the ground running, so great resources. Mm, good, good, yes, and, and definitely something to, uh, to look at on its own as, and as well as for the course, yeah. We, with Great Britain's death, we've got a game against France next month. Um, we've got quite a few new players 
we're trying a few new ones in the squad. We've got ones that have been borderline before that have now stepped up. Um, so quite an interesting time for them. Um, we have a, a two hour trip um, on the train to be able to get to Paris. Those are now all booked as one-to-ones where we can use more NLP in that environment, in those one-to-ones with those players, mm -hmm. understand them better, mm -hmm. form a better rapport with them, which, which in turn will pay benefits both for them and for the squad. Yeah, yeah, good, good. So you're starting to think ahead. Yeah. So um, generally for you then, uh, you know, what's on the horizon? What are you going to be okay. uh, focusing um, on? There are, there are opportunities that are now becoming available, as I said, that, that I'm now looking into. Um, so I've got a bright summer ahead in terms of looking at where my career will go. Um, I've stayed still for a while. I've now got a time where I've gone, actually, I've got that desire and an ambition to go further up the ladder. Mm. Um, and then LP has helped me be confident enough and, and, uh, and know that I'm capable of doing those things. So from a career perspective, me personally, there are opportunities for me to step up. Um, there are, for the teams that I work with, we've got Champions League next season, which is a first time full and deaf have been in Champions League, so there's going to be an interesting one for us there. Mm. Um, Chairman Son plays for us, there's, there's opportunities for him to, to step forward and play Champions League football which would be good for the, the club. So. Yes, yeah absolutely, so lots of things coming up and a change trend um, in your thinking and approach. Yeah, from Definitely. doing the programme. Great, yeah. great. Well, you know, congratulations on the, your achievements recently, Chris. That has been, you know, outstanding um, when you think about, you know, where the team were coming from in the opposition that they had. So that is great. And the fact that you've applied the um, material that you've been learning. And a big thank you for giving us that inter interview today. It's very interesting to hear coaching perspectives that are, are slightly different and that we can you know, all sort of benefit from. So um, thank you very much. Thank you.